Final carnival over the weekend, if you're not aware of it, it happened um, across Sunday and Monday. Sunday is usually the family day, kids day, and then Monday is when all the adults go and try and dagger, um, you know, 18 to 25 year old women, basically. <laughs> That's what basically happens in fucking carnival. Um, over the years, I have fell in and out of love of carnival like every other londoner has but in the end i love it even though i don't go as much um i haven't been probably since 2019 or something i still love the fact that we have this one event in london where you're able to go out on the streets drink crazy smoke like crazy do a bunch of balloons bust a wine eat some fucking caribbean food and the most important thing for me for carnival which i love which i kind of you know regret not going this year after seeing some pictures from my friends and stuff on the instagram account is the ability to see loads of people that you haven't seen in ages i feel like culturally carnival is one of the main kind of cultural touch points that gets everyone together like doesn't because usually you know i'd say london is kind of multicultural anyway it really is in terms of its approaches events everyone kind of goes to everything but across time you know as time progresses and everyone kind of gets older everyone kind of moves on to do other things so sometimes it can be hard to see all your kind of scene friends and stuff that you kind of used to hang around them you know what you used to hang out with back in the day so carnival is usually the best time to see them you see them all in one place loads of fucking good catch-ups get to happen it's always good vibes um you know maybe some after parties and whatever maybe some branded stuff i remember back when i used to go the boiler room stuff was really big um the, the free entry to the boiler room stuff was big because you used to get free drinks the free entry to the red stuff was great as well for the same sort of thing and all that stuff used to come because you see all these people you haven't seen in ages and everyone be in a good mood and they went to kind of you know have make sure everyone had a good time and shit so that was kind of incredible but having seen those clips of my friends over there i was have to say it kind of did kind of remind me again of just how you know fragile how just how quickly things change right there was a time in my life when we were all kind of basically inseparable and then you know over the period of time things just kind of changed i say a lot of it probably has to do with me and my inability to kind of cultivate maintain um friendships and relationships in a really meaningful way i'm just not good at it or i just maybe don't like to do it and i stay away from it who knows but either way it is really evident to see that i along with maybe a couple other people are the only ones that are not there everyone else is still there so everyone else is still doing the same things everyone else is still enjoying their same friends and having a good time the only thing that's missing really is guys like me and a few others who have purposely maybe stayed away who've been pushed away whatever it may be that's kind of an interesting thing to see and it's kind of a bit bittersweet to be like oh you know what i haven't really spoken to these guys in years but it's good to see that they're still friends even though i'm not still in that kind of clique but they're still clearly still friends and stuff and they still get to hang out and i'm sure you get to see all these other people going around as well so it kind of goes back to my same point that i made in the previous pod where i was basically saying hey if you're under 25 and you're at the point where you're like you know um complaining about your friends and saying you don't have any and you, you know they don't get you and stuff i honestly tell you as as an as a guy that's older than you please make sure that you try and cultivate those friends and you try and recover rescue maintain whatever it is friendships that you have now because as the as the years go by it becomes harder and harder to do that stuff because people just move on and they have other priorities they have other friends that kind of fill those voids that you left behind and no one's out here no one's going to be waiting for you no matter how good of a friend you are no matter how cool you are how funny you are how whatever you are kind it doesn't matter no one's going to be waiting around for you until you decide to be their friend they're just going to move on and get somebody else to kind of fill that void so if you are feeling a little bit um cynical about shit don't try to get at least you know a good little click with you that kind of stays around because it's it's always a nice reminder of what those clicks mean when you go to place that carnival because that's where you get to kind of you know really kind of have a good time in groups and stuff lose each other in the crowds find each other again all that stuff is fucking phenomenal like i absolutely love it so i'm going to play a little clip that i kind of ripped from twitter um showing some of the scenes um at not Neil carnival 2023 so you can see what the vibe is saying i'm sure most of you know wagwan when it comes to carnival but for those that don't let's quickly play this little clip here that i kind of ripped from kind of a clip from twitter sorry and it'll give you a good idea of what the vibe is saying
Damn it. You have to be so careful though. As inviting as that may look to some people, you have to be so careful. You have to, especially now these with the cameras and stuff out. The worst thing ever to happen to you as you kind of go and do your little two-step towards them, Batty's whining and stuff is getting the dreaded stop and the look back over the shoulder to check if you're fucking good looking <laughs> or if you're cool. And then you get the walk away and that shit will crush your soul. That shit will crush your soul, sorry, not your soul. And it will live with you forever and ever. So you have to move with real caution out there in the Norton Hill streets. Don't get too crazy. Don't let your hands go wandering. Don't let your fucking hips gyrate too closely to somebody that doesn't want to dance with you. Feel the mood. Look at the climate around you. Make sure you do your P's and Q's. Check all your shoulders. And when you move, move decisively and also have an exit plan so if you get the if you get the little uh, you're ugly kind of look you know where to kind of duck out but don't move too hastily because if you do you could get cemented in fucking you know 4k forever and ever and people will never forget what you end up looking like when you're out there like this so move with caution for next year you get the gist right so it looked fucking fun it looked like a great time everyone clearly had a absolute blast um i have kind of fallen out of love with it just because of the journey there traveling from where i'm from going to flipping west london is just too long um and because where i live there's a very big um community of caribbean people and african people who love to go to carnival so it's not as if like when you're going to from other places the train journey is a bit you know empty towards west end and when you get to central maybe it kind of clear it kind of gets busier from where i am the train is as busy going as it is coming back and on the way back is usually the i feel like the main reason why i don't go anymore because if you're not if you're not aware about carnival it's essentially in a certain area in flipping west london around sort of like the labrocoogie grove area and when you leave the station they kind of let you leave near where the carnival is and then you kind of follow it around these particular roads where there's all these little um there's these um sound systems and stuff and sometimes there's obviously the 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 float i've got what they call floats or whatever with all the procession of different sort of people um playing their music and stuff and dancers all the flipping feathers and shit which is pretty crazy but then when it ends i'm assuming because of a you know people traffic sort of thing they usually make you go the whole a really long way around and you end up having to go to a, a station that's way far away from where you are actually located at the at the festival at the, sorry at the carnival to go and get a train back which means everybody takes the same route and you all get in a train at the same time because it all ends at seven so when you get on that train it's still as busy and plus a central london train during bank holiday um monday it's still going to be fucking busy so you have to you having to travel back with all those people that you kind of were with there all the way back again everybody's thinking of bo everyone's being noisy and shit no space it's just crazy so uh, the journey at home is just not worth it for me and and then basically you know fundamentally i'm not really that bothered about um bashment music that much that i'd need to go i think the only reason that would really make me want to go is mostly the food because i feel like caribbean food for some reason especially in my part of london is really inconsistent in terms of quality some one, one restaurant might be right highly regret highly regarded but then after a couple of months suddenly the quality control goes down and the quality of the food isn't that great and then you kind of miss the you know the good quality of food they have but i feel like in carnival it's one of the only times where all the best in my theory anyway all the best caribbean restaurants from london basically congregating at one spot to kind of show off to kind of show how good they cook and whatnot and they were competing and you essentially get the best possibility to get some of the best caribbean food you've ever had in all one spot and then sometimes if you're lucky towards the end especially on a monday 
when they're cleaning up and stuff and they you know, don't want to take all this hot food back with them, they'll give you crazy discounts on the food. So sometimes you'll come back with like two boxes of fucking rice and peas and jerk chicken and shit for like, you know, a tenner or something. Do you know what I mean? Like crazy amounts of food, like really big, big, big big heapy portion so i've always been a fan of going to those side places and just going for the food i swear to god because it's just amazingly how good it is when you get there but that like i said the other reason is also to go see your friends and hang out with people and see the kind of vibes and then i'm going to play another quick clip here which is another reason why to go because sometimes you might end up seeing your favorite artist performing there and we saw I saw this clip going viral on Twitter of Giggs um, performing the unofficial UK national anthem to a crowd full of people. And it was quite heartwarming to see that because, you know, having listened to his recent album, I don't think anybody's going to be playing that album out the way they're, they're playing some of his older stuff. So it's good to see him still getting the love that he deserves. And obviously the crowd going really crazy when they fucking heard it because this song is still an absolute anthem. <laughs> absolutely amazing man big up gigs good to see him getting the love and appreciation he deserves the unofficial flipping national anthem of the uk is gigs talking the hardest if you haven't heard it before please type that in into your youtube into your spotify into your apple app music that is gigs talking the hardest performing that live out there at one of the fucking sound system one of the stands one of the places over there at flipping carnival absolutely love it and then obviously to finish we got these clips and these posts courtesy of shadeborough who posted some carnival highlights which is fucking incredible because it features this one video i've seen on social that boggled my mind because i was like how the fuck did these two people get up there this is an incredible scene so big up whoever these people are because you put on a hell of a show and you really did put a smile on my face when i saw this on social i can't imagine how incredible this must have been to see in real life actually so look at this look at this courtesy of the shade bro this is absolutely phenomenal can you see that there's essentially a couple right on the bridge near central Lanza, the where that where this must be right um this one of the bridges that you cross when you're going to carnival and they are whining on the fucking bridge on the side of the bridge <laughs> man's like whining on the other side of the bridge is fucking insane man i fucking love london so that's obviously a good indication of you know the vibes that happen over there if flipping carnival if that's your daughter you're gonna be pissed but if that's your son you're gonna be pumping up your chest because my man is up there like fucking spider-man one hand on the waist one hand on the side of the bridge uh, grinding anyway we continue next slide of course we've got all the people there procession of people having a great bunch of fun all the colors and stuff all the vibes all the enjoyments probably everybody's there's you know yaks off their mind of fucking rare nephews magnums wagwans hennessy it's such a vibe man like you can legitimately get contact high um from walking around the streets of london during carnival because you know you don't really get that usually there today because you know um weed and cannabis is not le not legal here but on that one occasion this and usually um what's it called and um and 420 are usually the both some of the funnest times in london out and about because we don't really get a lot of like out we don't really get a lot of fun outdoor street life in london or in the uk because i guess we just can't be trusted as brits or as english people we're a little bit you know we're all liabilities in our own way and we all kind of don't really you know we don't respect the rules and shit so this is usually a fun time um because it's a bit lawless um there's a video clip here of an old lady winding it up as well having a fucking good time big up her young in spirit um you know did that woman try to give her a drink oh, okay i thought she tried to give her a little cup full of energy <laughs> to keep her going but yeah she looks fit and able and ready to go and winding it up you know if she could bend over i'm sure there'll be a guy there ready to dagger ready to dagger granny up that like, don't get it twisted 
when people when the guys come out during carnival they are thirsty brother thirsty they'll grab up that oap hip and dagger it up until she anyway they'll, they'll be breaking her back like, like they wanted those fucking chiropractors <laughs> anyway it continues We've got another picture here of a of a young lady here in a crazy, crazy costume. Nice to see that as well during carnival, right? Looking absolutely fantastic. Great to see all these type of things. Usually these girls are are, are protected from the hungry guys by uh, like ropes or sometimes human shields because some of the guys can't can't keep their hands to themselves <laughs> and they see them on the street so it's good to see her looking safe and checking her shoulders as a good london girl would do making sure she's aware of who's behind her at all bloody times so big up this young lady next slide here we've got our oh, mizzy was out there in a suit on with balloons and wearing that fucking stupid hat yo mizzy must no offense to the kid but he, the bo must be banging in it can you imagine what he smells like day to day like not to be offensive because he's always wearing that fucking stupid hat he's got this crazy outfit on right he's got tracksuit pants with a suit jacket and white socks like he looks horrendous like absolutely zero drip <laughs> so big up <laughs> mizzy um and then you've also got a clip here that features somebody proposing to somebody at carnival with his fucking does he has he got his ass out is it got builder's bum or am i mistaken i feel like the guy is fucking bum showing he's proposing to his girlfriend but she doesn't look like she's happy about this or am i mistaken does she look happy i don't think she looks too happy about it she's kind of shrugging her shoulders acting a bit of like a like she doesn't really give a fuck and yeah he's trying to propose trying to make it right his boys are clowning him like we do in england we don't take anything serious and yes yeah, it's, it's turned into a bit of a joke thing but proposing to a girl at carnival is sickening so big up them hopefully she said yes because my man was out there with his bum out in that in puma boxes trying to propose to his girlfriend in central london you can't go worse than that there's a clip here of a guy that looks like he does weights in the gym with a shysty on picking up a, a very very big girl and dropping on the floor oh my god oh my god okay that's not a good look but also that is quite representative of the gym physiques we have here in london most guys in london that work out especially some of the guys that do like um the bar training barbell i don't know what they call the bar things they're usually built like this they have incredible upper bodies like ripped to shit pecs you know for days abs always you know abs with all kind of fucking you know ups and downs in them but the legs are always like twigs which makes sense because most guys in london like to wear amiris and skinny jeans and shit so i get it if you want to just have the guns out for your t-shirts and still wear skinny jeans cool but i've always thought you know maybe keeping your body somewhat proportional is quite a better look but hey it is what it is hopefully the girl's okay hopefully the guy's ego is survives but he's got his shy on so no one will know who he is and then the next page you've got a clip here of a looks, looks like a baby grinding on a woman on the floor right but then when he gets up, he puts a joint in his mouth and everyone realizes it's actually an adult. It's a grown man. It's a grown fucking man. People thought it was a fucking baby, but it's actually a grown man. It's actually A-side. That's who it is. They realize it was fucking A-side. <laughs> A-side up here grinding on this girl. Everyone thought it was a small child. But it's actually A-side. Yeah? It's actually A-side there, right? Looking all grumpy. Um, probably going to play some fucking Robert Glasper and clear the dance floor. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there he is <laughs> right and then talk about how amazing he is a sides there on the shoulders of the guy if you know you know but yeah um kind of a look like fun like fun not flun and i'm kind of you know bummed that didn't go but usually you know i usually give myself an opportunity a window to go by going outside and you know buying something from the store drinking and shit at the same time everyone's leaving so if i feel like i got the itch on a sunday i'll usually try and arrive on a monday the fact that i didn't go basically tells me everything i need to know about my current about my current feelings on carnival i love seeing other people enjoy it it brings me a lot of joy and it makes me smile because like i said we don't really have good outside lifestyle options in the uk because we're very anti-fun our government is super we're living like in a bit of a nanny state right they don't really let us do anything to be honest but you know for the most part we also can't be trusted so it kind of is a bit of a bummer but i do like it when i see my fellow londoners out there enjoying themselves having a good time and people that visit from all over the world is also great to see because we don't really get that option the only issue with the whole kind thing is i feel like the after party scene still isn't the greatest um i remember we used to go to this after party in this pub which was up the road 
from Carnival. I forgot what the name of it was. And he used to put on some all right events. I remember some iconic, memorable DJ EZ set in there that were absolutely crazy, right? I could still probably feel the sweat dripping from the walls of his amazing sets. Like one of the greatest DJs we have from this country actually doesn't get the enough support and love that he probably should do. He's someone that should be playing a fucking fold all night long. Thinking about it, actually. I'd love to see a fucking DJ EZ set at fold all night long. He'd absolutely tear that pace to fucking pieces. Or if he actually decides one day to decide to just jump on to techno and start playing that that with the stuff that he already plays off it'll be a fucking lock off but anyway that being said um i think carnival is great for the people that love it it's a great celebration of caribbean culture and everything else concerning black people and shit the food's fucking fantastic seeing all the fucking outfits the music um you know the vibes everyone's always in, usually in a good mood i fucking love it so big up carnival and long live carnival and may it long 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 continue may it long 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 continue